required for you to make informed decisions about this case. In accordance with provisions of Chapter 238 of LLC's annual regulations and to fulfill civic duty, the Associated World and Nichols House of Detention City by filing an application for a historic property designation. My clients ask that you accept the recommendation of your Historic Preservation Commission to designate the Nichols House of Historic Property. The Commission's recommendation was carefully considered and, and a strong one. It was fair. It was reached through a public process. It was based on evidence gathered by independent research and on expert evaluations by the city's own staff. It weighed opposing viewpoints. It reflected the correct understanding of both facts and principles involved. Since being named, it has been corroborated by the Georgia Department of Natural Resources Historic Preservation Office, which in a newly considered preliminary finding dated 7 October, declared the Nichols House to be eligible for the National Register. Any representation of the Nichols House is not meeting the standards for a historic property, such as was made in the document submitted to the city on or about October 6th and repeated in today's Dallas Times, is therefore false. The Nichols House does meet the standards for a historic property. It is not nearly historic, it is significantly historic. There is, in my professional opinion, no more significant 20th century house in Valdosta. It is exactly the sort of building that Chapter 238 is intended to identify and protect for a public good. It is hard to find better examples of that sort on any date, anywhere in town. Its only rival is the Crescent. The Nichols House is now the best documented historic house in Niles County. For that reason alone, it will be the house most likely to be studied by the future historians of Valdosta. The details of its design, construction, history of ownership, history of maintenance, and history of use, the record of crimes committed within it and against it, the names of every person who has defended it and of every person who will advocate its demise are recorded for posterity in numerous publications and increasingly voluminous public records. Much to the credit of Valdosta's concerned citizenry, archival documents about it have been offered up by private hands to be placed in public repositories, there to compose the balance in which history will judge us all. The Nichols House provides the key to understanding what all of Valdosta's built heritage of the 1950s means. It represents the very best that the greatest generation left as their permanent request, bequest to this city. As early as next month, I predict, anyone reading the minutes of today's meeting will be astonished to learn that that bequest was ever even considered to deserve less respect than the World War II veterans who commissioned and built it. You are now aware of many proofs of the Nichols House's historic significance. There is now no risk whatsoever of the house being lost by inadvertence. If it is to be destroyed, it can be destroyed only by individuals with full and complete awareness, and thus with premeditation, that they are destroying a major part of Valdosta's heritage. No one has a right to destroy the heritage of Valdosta. No one has a right to preserve it either. But the city of Valdosta has the freedom to assure that the historic structures standing within its boundaries remain available to promote the general welfare, aesthetics, and public education of the citizens of Valdosta. The exercise of that freedom by you, the chosen representatives of those citizens, should not be constrained by allegations of a taking, whether by inverse condemnation or under any other theory. The Supreme Court disposed of the takings question in its 1978 ruling in the Penn Central case. The court found that historic property regulations do not constitute a taking because the regulations do not interfere with the owner's reasonable investment back expectations. The Nichols House fully deserves the protection that the city of Valdosta has every reason and the full freedom to accord it under the powers reserved to the city under Chapter 238. It ranks among Valdosta's most architecturally remarkable structures. It exemplifies technical excellence. It documents important historical trends. It is connected with numerous historical figures, including Lloyd Greer. 
It is valuable not only to Valdosta, but also to Lowndes County, the state of Georgia, and even the United States. The state declared its interest in Nichols House by including it in the 2003 Historic Resources Survey of Mounds County. We ask you to safeguard simultaneously the cities, the counties, and the state's interests by approving the recommendation before you. Through the process that generated the facts about the Nichols House that you now have, the Alden Park Homeowners Association and I became aware of a disturbing situation. To fulfill another civic duty, my clients have asked me to bring it immediately to your attention. They and I are convinced that the historic preservation process in Valdosta is not working as the enabling ordinance intended, either to the benefit of property owners or to assure the retention of Valdosta's genuinely historic structures. The city has vast areas full of buildings that are not historically valuable, and yet, that are protected. On the other hand, it has dozens of historic buildings that are unprotected, or whose claim to protection is contested when it should be unquestioned. Many citizens charge, we think justifiably, that the Historic Preservation Commission often functions not as a deliberative body, as it did correctly in the case of Nichols House, but instead, and inappropriately, as a design review board. To any of you who knows or who believes that we are right in our assessment, my clients say that the time to acknowledge that truth is now. They ask you to confess in, uh, to public now that the issues involved will not be resolved in this meeting in the next few minutes. Neither preserving nor condemning the Nichols House will resolve them. My clients and I believe that they would best be resolved in a public forum in which all sides of the issues can be aired and explored. We are convinced that consensus can be reached on a solution that will both affirm the correctness of your decision to preserve the Nichols House and strengthen Valdosta's ability to gain full benefit from historic preservation. We believe it is urgently important to reform the abuses that to Valdosta's detriment are undermining public confidence in historic preservation and are thereby contributing, even today, to threats against the Nichols House. It would be wrong to make the Nichols House the victim of anyone's dissatisfaction or doubts about Valdosta's historic preservation process. It will be right to use the preservation of the Nichols House as the starting point for fixing that process. My clients ask the city not only to protect the Nichols House, but also, once it has protection, to give all possible assistance to its owners in finding a proper use for it, finding, financing its maintenance, and selling it if desired. They ask that you do so to strike a balance in the cause of justice. And they ask you to remember that the sale of the historic house to a sympathetic buyer normally takes more than a few months. Because the city as a whole stands to benefit from the preservation of the Nichols House, the city should express its gratitude for the Georgia <coughs> Sigma Housing Corporation of Sigma Alpha Epsilon for its stewardship of the property since 2003. My clients therefore encourage the city, upon designation of the Nichols House, to rebate to that corporation all of the city taxes it has paid since 2003 over and above the amounts that would have been due on any similarly valued structure in a Valdosta Historic District. Doing so would ease for the corporation the burden of ownership of historic property, which always goes along with the honor entailed. It would hence accord with the spirit of both local and federal law <coughs> on historic preservation. Both my clients and I pledge to assist the current owner, any future owner, and the city of Valdosta to help in whatever ways we can to preserve the Nichols House. We are sure that it would be possible to obtain grants and raise a considerable endowment to preserve the house and maintain the house should it become the property of a charitable organization. There are numerous charitable uses to which the Nichols House, as it now stands, would lend itself. <clears throat> it is obvious that viable non-charitable uses for the house also exist. 
The originally single-family Nichols house has already been adapted to be reused twice, first as a health clinic and second as a paternity house. Four similarly-sized houses on the Baba Bay Street are currently adapted to be reused, two for group housing, one for office space, and one for religious purposes. Valdosan has hundreds of buildings that have been successfully adapted to new functions. The city hall is one of them. Patterson Street is lined with them. From Oak to Gordon, the north side of Bay Street is lined almost continuously by adapted houses. Webster Street has an outstanding example. The Copeland office on Adair Street is another great example of my personal favorite. Valdosta has at least one broker, reputed successful in selling historic properties to responsible new owners. Valdosta has developers, architects, engineers, and contractors well able to conceptualize, design, and complete adaptive reuse projects with long-term income potential. For any of them, the adaptation of the Nichols House would be the dream project of a lifetime. Its completion would be certain to gain them and Valdosta publicity to national magazines. Why would you not want such wonderful publicity for your city? Adaptive reuse is self-evidently a viable option for owners of historic property in Valdosta and including this property. It would be misleading to suggest that the Nichols House has no viable use. My clients, above all, beg you not to be persuaded to see the Nichols House as valueless. The only way to render the Nichols House valueless is to demolish it. Because your rejection of the opportunity for you will lead directly to demolition, only you have the power to reduce its value to nil. As it stands, Nichols House is an asset. It is a pearl of great price. Its value to Valdosta is immense. Its value to its owner will be increased by historic designation because such designation entails tax benefits. Its value to Valdosta lies in what it can contribute to quality of life here. The development authority disclosed to a recent Rotary Club meeting that the number one challenge to Valdosta's efforts to attract, keep, and expand industry is the difficulty of assuring industrial employers a highly qualified and sustainable, settled workforce. One key to overcoming that difficulty is education. Another key is quality of life. Educate people, people with high technical skills, smart people with many employment options can choose where they live. They consistently choose places with vibrant arts institutions, beautiful neighborhoods, and commitment to heritage. For years, they chose places like Charleston, Savannah, and Millichill. They do not choose places whose streetscapes are spoiled by eyesores and pockmarked by detention pockets, instead of being graced by pieces of high-quality architecture. They choose places where historic preservation is valued and contributes to the constant improvement of streetscapes. They choose places that choose to retain the best of their past for the enjoyment of their future. They are now choosing places like Sarasota and Jacksonville, which are building lucrative uh, programs of heritage tourism around buildings from the same year as the Nichols House. In South Georgia, instead of Alaska, they're starting to choose places like Waycross, uh, Thomasville, and Bainbridge. My clients draw your attention to the benefits of preparing for the preservation of a remarkable individual structure has brought to those towns with what the preservation of the infinitely more remarkable Nichols House can bring to Dallas. They ask you to recognize the value that the Nichols House can maintain Dallas is competitive edge over the long haul. They urge you to act in the interest of the citizens of Dallas, to remember your duty to act in those interests, to advance the future of Dallas in the right direction, to respect the independence, expertise, and good counsel of Dallas as a historic preservation commission, to begin to reform historic preservation here with a positive step in that direction, to pause before throwing away the real treasure. I'm sorry, Mr. Lewis, your time's up. I have a question. Okay. Uh, sir, in, in your professional opinion, yes. if this home were to be picked up and moved to anywhere else in the city, would it still retain its historic value? I think it would retain a great deal of its historic value. 
I think it would lose the value that it has uh, due to, as Tony Foster described, having been designed uh, specifically for the site and because of the position it has within that neighborhood, within a cluster of buildings that uh, represent uh, really the only uh, contribution of Lloyd Greer to urban design. Mayor, and I don't know if you could help me with this, but I, I believe, and somebody correct me if I'm wrong, that if we did name this piece of property for this home historic, that it could be moved anywhere the owner wanted, correct? Or is that incorrect? It's a concrete floor, it'd be bit, very difficult to move. But it may be. May I, may I say something about that? The house is built over crawl space. And the floor is framed. So it could be. Yeah, I, I don't know. Okay. I'm not qualified to say. All right. Uh, since Mr. Willis took all the favorable comment time, we'll now have time for anyone to speak in opposition to this request. So is there anyone here to speak in opposition to this request? Madam Mayor, the Council of Allies for the Georgia Sigma Housing Corporation. State your name, please. My name is Andy Smith. I'm a local attorney. Most of you know me, some of you don't. Uh, unlike Mr. Langdale, I'm a member of this fraternity. I was involved with the decision to purchase this house and have been involved, and I'm here as a volunteer. We can take all the time you want. It's not going to pay my pocket, but you got 14 minutes. Yeah, 14 minutes. All right. If you please, I would like to turn out some exhibits. I didn't think I had an iPad, but I was a little more high tech. One reason I'm here on the is because Georgia Sigma Housing Corporation has no funds to pay for it. So without me coming as a volunteer, there'd be nobody to represent them. Get on into this. First point I'm going to make this afternoon is that the Housing Corporation is absolutely opposed to the designation of this property as a historical property. The Housing Corporation was not asked prior to this application, and had they been asked, they would have told no, which is their answer now as well. Why you ask? When the Housing Corporation purchased this property in 2003, there was no historical designation on this property on the public record. There was no discussion of historical on designation of this property anywhere in the public or any newspaper articles that I've researched. So this property was purchased believing it not to be historical property, believing it to be a property that is appropriate for use by a fraternity. I can assure you we would not have purchased a valuable historical property for use by a fraternity. They're historically bad on the property. And they've been bad on this property. Um, the reason it was bought is because it represented what we thought a good long-term investment, which is because the housing downturn has not turned out to be. But nobody knows what the attorney's going to do. This attorney's been on off campus, and we wanted it out in case they, in fact, left. Well, the attorney has now left the property. Now, I can't look into these people's minds who brought this application. And, and Dr. Willis and I are childhood friends. He's as smart as Mr. Dan. He's still smart. That's a great presentation. I almost didn't get up. It was so good. <laughs> but the fact remains that this application wasn't brought until the rezoning phase. Prior to that, nobody heard about the Nichols House. We don't call it Nichols House. We bought it, we call it E House. When the Nichols lived there, it's the Nichols House. It's the E House for us now. Um, over all those objections, this body voted to rezone the property. That rezoning is not, in our mind, consistent with this, this property being designated historical. Based on that, we have a contract right now with another party that is contingent upon this property not being designated as historical. This was the only offer after all the signs were put up, the only offer made to purchase this property. 
No one else approached. When we approached the, the college, nobody else was interested in this property until these folks decided they didn't like their parts. Now, I might have done the same thing in their situation, but I think we need to face what's really going on. So I think this is nothing more, this I is nothing more than the tip of a rabbit out of the hat, as we used to say. I've reviewed Dr. Wilson's report, and I'm certainly no architectural expert, but uh, in my practice, I do have to look at testimony and documents and try to determine, you know, if they're consistent and if they're entirely true. Um, and I'm not saying this is not a truthful document, but there's some questions that I have to bring to the council. This report clearly states it, that it cannot absolutely contribute this property to Lloyd Greer. Now, um, the other architects mentioned, um, I think they would be, Connor Thompson would be just as, he's no longer with us, but he'd be loved to hear that he was held in that high standard. Uh, Lloyd Greer was the only one who was really nationally known. I've got to uh, give you a copy of these exhibits. I went online, I looked at uh, Wikipedia, which <laughs> is a modern dictionary, and it gives a list of properties attributed to Lloyd Greer in this city. This property is not owned. There's also a list by the Planning Commission of Mr. Pamphlet, and it tells the story of Lloyd Greer, and it lists a number of properties, and this property is not owned. So, all I can say, I'm not an expert in architects, but obviously the people who compiled the pamphlet don't agree with Dr. Wilson's assessment. This report also lists other similar properties. This is not the only property like that. There's, there's the Wayne property that's in a very stable neighborhood that's very similar to this property that there's no question about whether or not that's going to survive. Now, I didn't attend, but others attended and took notes for me to Mr. Willis' recent talk with DSU. Mr. Willis stated in that talk that this was a bi-nuclear house plan with neoclassical design which he has evidence of lasting historical significance, but it hasn't been reproduced since 1967. In the same talk, he represented his survey and took it all of Georgia and the Southeast to determine that this type of plan was abandoned in the South in 1967. This, this is a California type plan. It's not a South Georgia plan. It is somewhat unusual, but there are other homes that have that same unusual characteristic. So, in order to say this is historical, one must conclude that whenever a local lay architect designs a property by design that is later abandoned because it's determined not to be favorable, that it becomes historical. I, I can't buy into that. Um, the Housing Corporation tell you we, we don't think this plan was uh, popular because it is very energy inefficient and it's a very expensive property to keep up. There's also a reference in there that seemed to imply perhaps that the E-House was as significant as the Crescent. I, I can tell you, I've been to the E-House and we've had people visitors come. I've, I've never had anybody ask me, uh, is, this, is this the other historical place other than the Crescent? It, it just hasn't happened. Um, and we, we went further and we contacted a member of the Nichols family that grew up in this house. And we asked, what they thought, thought about this designation. And what she categorically stated was that her father would not want any such designation on this home against the owner of wishes because he believed it is everyone's right to do with their private property as they wish. We don't believe this is going to offend the family. This, this was a very nice home that was built. There's this house also had the barn and the home and had the old lecture. They're gone. This, this house is by itself. This house is on Bakery Road. Its present neighbor is an apartment across the street. There are duplexes and rental houses behind it. There's a tennis court, a gymnasium, an education building across the street. Next door is the Pike County Turner. There, there's nothing in this area on Bakery that is anywhere like the store. This, 
Slavery road is a very heavily traveled road. In fact, the Zane Valley was a very heavily traveled road until desolation closed down. And from what I understand, on the zoning, the proposed traffic count, even if the new apartments are built, it's going to be less than what desolation used to generate for school kids. So, if there's some question about the, what can the housing corporation afford, let me tell you where we are with that. Over the last 10 years, we've had contractors come in and try to tell us what to do about this house. And we've had numbers loaned with us with up to $250,000 to put this property in shape. The housing corporation has spent over $25,000 in the last four or five years trying to keep, just keep the house little, including $10,000 for electrical work that was done because of the age of the electrical system in there, these fancy gadgets I'd like to refer to in the court, the like still continues to be. So it's, it's, not, it's, it's not in good shape at all. The currently moved out of this house for one main reason, that's the money. The utility bills in this house are out of the roof and the cost of repair will be beyond the attorney's ability to pay those and still have a social life of the attorney. After they moved, several attorney brothers offered to rent the home from the housing corporation to give us a stream of income to continue to pay the notes of it. One of his father was a building inspector from another city in York. He came down to see where his son lived. He walked through the house, came back, and told his son, it's time to get out of the house. I have condemned houses in better condition than this one. And that's exactly what they all did. They all got up, they all left, and there went our rent. After they moved out with no income, only the alumni were left to, to pay for this. Even though the name, those are the name of the corporation. And there's only so long that alumni are going to support something like this. That's why the house was put up for sale. So there's no funds for the housing corporation to go in and rehab if y'all decide that this should be dead. Now, those are kind of factual things. Now we need to come into some legal grounds for not making this designation. First of all, if you'll notice on Exhibit C, that is a printout from today from the Secretary of State of Georgia's website showing the site with the present status of Alderman Homeowners Association Incorporated. What that shows is that Alderman Homeowners Association Inc. was never formed as a corporation. It does not legally exist. All they've had is two name reservations. And I'm sure the can can tell you, but there's Georgia Court and Georgia Statute, but Don Swan Sales Corporation versus Eccles that says there are no other de facto corporations in Georgia. What that means is if you don't form it with the Secretary of State, if you don't get an article certificate of incorporation, you don't exist. So the party <coughs> that made this application is a legal nullity. And with it being a legal nullity, this application is a legal nullity. That means they don't exist. That would be like a ghost getting up and making this application. To be a corporation, you've got to follow the law. Right. In, in the ordinance that they're relying on, it states in section 238-1-6, enhance the opportunities for federal or state tax benefits. Now, Dr. Willis said it is false that we can't get historical designation. I've attached another exhibit, which is the statement, the, excuse me, the, the regulation of the Federal Registry of Historical Places, and it states that unless the owner consents to the designation, it cannot be designated on the Federal Registry. And we're not consenting. If you don't have that consent, you don't get that
also, if you were to void, if you were to designate this property, that is going to void this contract you presently have. It's going to go away with it. That, I believe, would give rise to a claim against the city for grounds, uh, including the, this action to the so designate as an effective condemnation. And we believe that no ordinance can be required to anybody to rehab a 60 year old house. But what this boils down to is the neighbors don't like new apartments, and they don't want to use their own money to buy the new house, they have an offer to buy it. Instead, of via this application, they seek to force the economic consequences to fall unfairly on the Housing Corporation. Accordingly, the Housing Corporation respectfully asks the Council not adopt the recommendation of the Historical Commission and not designate this property as historical. 